fun day planned, but um, I do want to give a um, little bit of a, a challenge um, out of God's word for us today before we transition into our ministry fair. I've really been praying, um, God, give, give me a little direction as to what challenge can I give us as a church body in relation to ministry and getting plugged in and really what is all this for? And um, he directed me to a, a very familiar passage of scripture and a story of words from Paul in one of his letters to the church of Philippi to the Philippians. And if you guys have your Bibles, if you can turn to Philippians chapter 3. And um, Paul, who we studied before and talked about, um, very inspired, if you will, to write this letter to a, to a group of people in the city of Philippi, the Philippian church, which is why we call it the Philippians. And um, the theme of the letter, we call it a book, but it's really a letter, and the theme of the letter is, is joy. And um, which is really, um, when you really put in, in, into biblical history of where this letter was written from, it was written from um, Paul while he was in prison. And so, a uh, very interesting perspective uh, on that, that, that while someone is in that type of a situation, you would still have the, the, the joy that, that um, to come from, from receiving beatings and everything that he has gone through and yet still have in his heart the desire to write to a group of people who, um, who needed really some encouragement and um, really have gone through a lot. And so there was, um, he used a very familiar analogy as um, about racing or running a race. And, um, and, and so he, he does that actually quite often. And so in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12, I just got a few verses I'm going to read to you um, and hopefully you'll capture the heart of what I'm trying to communicate to all of us today. And this goes for all of us, but um, Philippians 3, verse 12, and it says, Not that I have already obtained all this. So right off the bat, he is already without apology, but just letting us know, listen, I, I'm not there yet either, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, and I want to get there, and this is what my life is consumed with. And so he said, listen, that, not that I've already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. And knowing the kind of life that Paul used to lead compared to where he's at now, what an incredible transformation. Church, you still with me here this morning? I mean, to go from a person who would seek after and chase after believers, Christians who were labeled in that day, um, followers of Jesus, and persecute them, and it sometimes even put them to death. And have this, this spiritual and physical transformation of where God literally knocked him off of his situation, a horse even, and transform his life to what he's saying to us today. And so he's saying, listen, I, I take hold from which Christ Jesus took hold of me. So, so brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which Christ has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we, um, we thank you, Lord, for this, this moment we have together, Lord. I pray, God, that... Um, do you just speak through this messenger today, Lord? I, I realize as Paul, I'm in no way comparing myself to Paul, Lord, but I feel that, Lord, that I have not even come close to fully obtaining everything you have for me and what you've done for me, Lord, but I strive towards that. Thank all of us, Lord, and that's my pastor's heart today and the prayer today, Lord God, is that we would make our life about eternity, Lord. What are we doing now that affects our future, Lord God? What am I striving for, Lord God? What am I spinning my wheels for today, God? And that's the challenge for all of us, Lord. Would you start with this heart, my heart, this pastor's heart today, Lord? I, I want my life 
change, Lord. I, I say this a lot, and I mean it sincerely, Lord. How I came here this morning is now how I want to leave. I want to be different, closer, even if it's just a baby step, Lord. But I want to be closer to you than where I, where I was when I started this here this morning. That's our heart's cry. That's our prayer today. So, Lord, use these words, not my words, but may your words challenge us today and change us from the inside out. We ask all this in your name, and everybody says, amen, amen. In talking about ministry day and, and showing you, and you're about to see all that and experience that for yourself, and what does that look like for you? And, and, and the heart behind all that, I, I was thinking about... Um, my life now and how that every, every action and everything I do today affects the future. You guys still with me on that? And, and, and what does that look like? Like when, when all my actions, all my thoughts, all everything I say and do, um, does everything I say and do will either bring me a reward or will it bring me regrets? Um, one of the, um, as a pastor, one of the privileges, and I call it a privilege, although it's a very difficult privilege at times, is to perform funerals and, um, and be there um, to celebrate a life that has gone on. And I say difficult because it's very, there's so much emotion with it, obviously you know that. Um, but one of the hardest things to do as a pastor is to sit back and watch people with so much regret at the end of something. You guys follow my logic where I'm going with that? And I guess the, in, in thinking about our future and my future and your future and we, our future as a church, uh, those questions came to mind is what am I doing today that's making a difference? What am I doing today that's making a difference? You're, I know sometimes you, you get that, you get that weird look like some of you guys give me today. Well, you're a pastor. You're, your whole entire being it's all about making a difference, and I get that. The title get, affords me that opportunity, but I, as I mentioned before, I, and I hope you guys understand this and you capture the heart behind this, there's so much more to my life than just a title. You guys get that? Uh, I carry a title as reverend. I carry a title as pastor, but I, I hope that that's not the thing that defines me at the end of the day. When I get to the end of whatever life is for me here on earth, however long that may be, I hope at the end of it that the only thing that people can come up with to describe me is, well, he was a pastor, and that's about it. What, what else defined me? Was, was I kind? Did I make it about other people? Did I, do, did I do anything to invest into the future of anybody I came in contact with? That's a very important question. What have I done? Listen, folks, I'm not here pointing fingers at you because I'm just as much as part of this fellowship as you are. I just have the privilege to lead it, but I'm, I'm in this journey just like you are, and I'm asking the same question that you are is, what is my life worth? Is it, is it the things that I've been able to collect and to add up? Is that what's going to define me at the end of the day? And here's the questions I have, and i got a way of showing you this picture in a minute, but I guess the couple of questions that I have is, how did I spend my time? Let that sink in for a little bit. How did I spend my time? Am I at the end, <laughs> at the end of it all when, when whoever gets that opportunity to preach my funeral, if it happens to be here, or I'm hoping crisis comes, I don't have one of those, but nonetheless, if it does happen and um, someone um, gets to speak at it, are they going to say, man, there goes Edgar. He, man, I'm telling you, that guy was amazing. You know why? He binge watched 7,000 movies on Netflix. I mean, it was an incredible feat that he accomplished. I mean, he watched every single one of them. In fact, he was there for Stranger Things when it first came out. I mean, he, he binged them all. Lord bless him now that he's in heaven. I hope he's there. You get what I'm, you, you're following me here? I mean, well, 
how did I, and if you do that, that's great. I don't know if there's a reward in heaven for binge watching stuff, but maybe I've been surprised before of things that God does, but I'm just saying I haven't read that anywhere in scripture. But nonetheless, how, how did I spend my time? And it's not, we always picture that as far as someone who's lived out a 99-year-old life, and that's awesome if you get there, but there's sometimes where life is very, very short and fragile. And again, that's not, not trying to be funny, or, or it's just, that's also the unfortunate part of my job sometimes is to be around those situations where, where life was cut short unexpectedly, and it really, really punches you in the gut. Are you still with me, church? And so the question still remains whether you're a teenager here today or we are, you're more seasoned. We don't, we don't use the word old here in this church. That's other churches. And so if you're, um, and now that I'm getting there, I don't really like that word, okay? And so whether you're a teen, thank you. Um, whether, you're a, um, <laughs> whether you're a teenager here today or you're more seasoned in life, the question still remains is what did you do with your time? The other half of that is, what did you do with your treasure? What did you do with your treasure? And it's not, oh, here we go, you're talking about money. I'm not even talking just about money. So get your panties out of there, guys. That's not what, I, what I'm saying today. No, it's so much more than that. What you do with your time, what you do with your treasure. That's it. It's really that simple. And um, I came up with, uh, I didn't come up with it. It's been, this illustration's been around. I've even used it years ago. Um, but um, I, it's, I've used different type of items to try to illustrate it. But um, let me see if I can get this out here. I, I try to come up with a way to kind of, um, I really didn't tie this into a knot. I'm not really sure what's happening. I need my Royal Ranger. I didn't get one of those. Um, but I have this way of illustrating to you guys this morning kind of a timeline, if you will, of what our life can represent. This is eternity. Interni hopefully eternity is not going to be in knots like this. That'll preach, well, that's a whole other message right there in itself. I just came up with a whole other sermon just now, okay? Um, thank you, Lord. So here's, uh, here's, here's life as, as we know it. Now, those of you who are... Um, Math specialists, majors, um, those of you who are, I, I look at a couple, uh, Brother Fred over here has got, you got your doctorate in this, okay? So I should be asking you these questions, but from what I understand in math, a straight line can kind of go forever, doesn't it, Fred? Doesn't just, there's really no, well, I know, but yeah, there's a stop to this, yes. Okay, so it, it, a straight line, if you were to do a timeline in, in life, and this, this right here would represent eternity. You guys still follow me? Okay, just stay with the illustration, folks. I know some of you who are really, really OCD going, well, that's not eternity. I mean, there's an end of it right over there. Just, just be quiet, all right? Um, I cannot, I couldn't find forever rope in the store, people, so grow up, okay? Um, this is about as forever as it gets, okay? So, pretend, <laughs> the OCD people drive me nuts. Um, so, here's, here's eternity, okay? Now, now I've got to get back over here so you can see me because I want to get into the light, not because I enjoy the, but y'all see this little portion right here? Okay, what color can y'all see that? It's orange, right? You know how I feel about orange, but nonetheless, there it is, okay? I use it because, well, that's a whole other issue. Um, this right here, let me sure y'all can see that, okay? This right here in relation to all of this eternity this right here represents our life here on earth. Y'all still with me? So, <laughs> here's the funny, and I kind of made myself laugh. Y'all might not laugh, but I, I'll laugh at myself. I know I can count on Mark, so thank you, Mark. So, um, and I'm here all week, Lord, so get your tickets early. But our life, here, here it is. And so, some of us spend so much time and energy and everything we can muster for this right here in relation to this. You still follow me? 
Now, for illustration's sake, please stay with me here, church, okay? But try to, I mean, I hope you guys are visualizing this. This is a large rope forever representation of what eternity looks like. And and I even kind of made this bigger this morning, really it should be. But I wanted you guys to be able to see what this looks like. But this right here is life. And we spend, and I say we because I'm right there with you, we spend so much energy and time and making so much about this little portion right here that we forget or sometimes not even think about that there's so much more to life than just this. I mean, do we, here's the first question. Do you believe God's word is true? I mean, I, let's ask that again. Do you believe God's word is true? Okay. And because God's word is true, there is a, an eternity, there is life after here on earth life. Amen? Okay? Scripture tells us that. Because of that, church, here, here's where I'm getting at, okay? Because of that, the challenge for us is how much do we really think about beyond this little line right here? After this is already said and gone, however long that may be for you as a human being here on earth, but have you ever really thought about what we do in this space right here might affect what happens here? And not even for yourself, but what about other people? Still with me? Some of us, and I know this is the young, younglings are probably not going to really think so much about this side of it. I didn't when I was 12 or 13 or 15. But some of us, and listen, what I'm about to say, don't get all excited and mad at me, but let me just say it first before you start judging, okay? But some of us, again, because of this right here, do so much. I mean, I'm like, and I've done that. I'm going to save and save and save and save and save and save. And then I'm going to do a little bit more saving and doing all I can. So when I get to right here, y'all see that right here? This right here, I'm going to do all this. Because when I get to this right here, I'm going to retire and do some amazing stuff. I'm going to the Great Barrier Reef. They might have to stick me on the inner tube when I get there, but I'm getting there. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And listen, God, there's nothing wrong with being forward thinking. I I hope there's nothing wrong with saving. There's nothing wrong with dreaming. You you follow me, right, folks? But this is the point I'm trying to get. We focus so much on, especially those of us who are more seasoned, so much here, so much here, so much here. But what are we doing that's affecting anybody for all of this? What are we doing? Ask myself the same question. At the end of the day, God, what am I doing that makes a difference for this, for this, for this. Who have I talked to? Who have I shared with? Who have I listened to that just needs to talk? That could affect the rest of their life. More than just what you see down there. Still with me, church? So here, here's the question I have. This is kind of what I'm getting at. It's really a simple question. With this right here, are we building a castle? Or are we a kingdom builder? That's the question. With what we're doing in life, are we building a castle? Where are we kingdom builders? Now listen, don't get out here saying, well, Lord, that pastor made fun of the way I live, made fun of my house, made fun of my retirement. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying at all. At all. I mean, I'm saving. Trying. It's hard to in this day and age. But I, I guess, you know, I don't guess, I know. I was very, very much convicted all over again in thinking about what difference am I making beyond even what I get to do up here. 
Are you still with me, church? I, I really, and I hope this is received the right way, I don't even want people to remember me for what I'm doing right now as far as behind this pulpit. I really don't. Do you follow what I mean by that? This is important, and I'm answering a call that God gave me back in 1988, okay? It's when I received my call to ministry. And I'm doing it with fear and trembling many times, trust me. But preaching is not, that's not everything I want to be remembered for. Come on, church, you still with me today? Can you say amen? I hope that at the end of the day, people said, man, I, I, don't, I didn't even know really that he was a preacher, but every time he came into our store, he made it about me that day. You know, I didn't even know that guy pastored that church down there. That's really funny for me to hear that because every time he came in our restaurant, not only did he eat all our chips, but he took time out to ask me how my day was going. And be honest with you, my day was pretty cruddy that day, and he stopped, and he actually prayed with me that day. He stopped eating chips, and he prayed for me, and it changed my life. For what? Eternity. That's, that's what I want to be remembered for. I really do. You know, I have, um, and I've got one of them here. Sometimes I have several on Wednesday nights. But I get an awesome opportunity, as I mentioned, to coach some really awesome young ladies. And um, so don't tell the rest of them in Trinity why we do this, okay? But um, I get to be around some awesome young ladies in basketball and try to teach them the game of basketball. But when I get to coach those young ladies, it is so much more than just showing them a game of basketball. I hope that I was able to instill in them God's love somehow. That my life around these young, precious lives were affected because they saw somebody who might not have been having the greatest weeks in the world and maybe the greatest day in the world, but somehow find a way to smile and tell those girls how much they were loved and valued by God. You still hear me, church? That has nothing to do with what I get to do up here. I'm a man. I'm a child of God. I'm sitting on the greatest story that's ever been told right here. And I want to do my best to tell that story beyond what I get to do behind a pulpit. I want to live it out. I want it to make a difference. You're saying, what does all that have to do with a ministry fair? Because that's why we serve people let me let you in. Here, here's, a, here's an interesting phrase I want you to remember right now. If you don't remember anything else, remember this. This is what today is all about. Saved people serve people. Did you catch that? Saved people serve people. Why? Because I want the served people to save people. There's the entire day today in a nutshell. Saved people serve people people. Why? Because I want to serve people to turn around and save people. To pour into people's lives as they come into a kid's ministry. Then when someone who maybe come to this place for the first time, maybe, maybe it's their first time in church, period, okay? And they drop off reluctantly because it's fearful to come to a new place, but they have a child in arms, and they go to a nursery, and an awesome nursery coordinator is sitting in there with a smile on their face, and they receive this child into their own, and they play games with them and pour God's word into them, and just for, for about an hour and a half, or about an hour, they make it all about God into those children. And that mom and dad come in here, and they hear a message, and their life gets changed and transformed. Save people, do what? Serve people. And serve people, save people. That's the why behind we asking you today, get plugged in. Get plugged in. 
You're saying, I don't even like kids, that we definitely don't want you around kids, okay? <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, if kids ain't your thing, we ain't going to put you around kids because we don't want to be on the news someday, okay? That ain't your thing, we ain't going to put you there, okay? But there's so much more to serving just being around kids. There's so many other things that we can do. Come on, church, you're still with me today. I, I know we get to something like this, you're thinking, oh, man, I just, I don't know how he's making me feel all inside. I don't know if I like that whole thing. But guess, guess what? That's, what? that's what this is. What do you think Jesus did? What do you think he did? Save people do what? Serve people. That's what today's all about. Our leaders worked extremely hard to try to communicate to you what that looks like. From, yes, from the kids department back there, wild and free kids, that's so stinking awesome back there, guys. And those of you who serve in our kids department and you're still serving our kids department, thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I can't thank you enough. But we have not only Sunday morning, we also have Wednesday nights, and that's why we have other things represented. And wild and free kids, that's what I call our, that's our children's department. And it's not because they're wild and free, okay? They're not running over on Highway 80 on 259. That's not why they're wild and free. There's a whole reason behind that. And I would love for you, and here's, the, here's your homework. Go over to the wild and free booth when you leave this place and ask them why they're called wild and free. I'm not even going to give you the answer to that because maybe you should find out for yourself. Why are they called wild and free? And that'll give you an incentive to go visit that. You guys still with me? So you got the kids. You got your nursery. You have Royal Rangers who are men pour into our young men. We have Missionettes, Girls Ministries. And we have women that pour into our young ladies and teaching them all about God's word and our men teaching about God's word and how to be a man or how to be a woman. So when they grow up someday and they're serving in the church, hallelujah, they know what that's all about and they become incredible church members because they learned back when they were five years old that save people do what? Serve people. That's a learned behavior. We want to teach that. I know we, we, our kids have been doing that for years. Not just because they're PKs, but they have. They've done it. They know what that's all about. So we have wild and free kids that are out there right now. Um, Wednesday night meals, for those of you, some of y'all missing out on some incredible food, but it's not just about the food, but we have Wednesday night meals that happen sometimes. And we do that just once a month. And uh, we do that in, in, in place, well, in, before a prayer night or something else that might happen that night. So once a month, usually it's about the fourth Wednesday. If there's a five Wednesday month, and sometimes we'll push it to the fifth Wednesday. But once a month, towards the end of the month, on a Wednesday night, they'll serve a meal, try to get us. For those of you who are young, those of you mamas that have young kids, come on, y'all say, woo, yeah, it's, life is hard, isn't it? So we're trying to make it easier for people to come and grab a meal, feed your family, and still participate and be a part of a church. It's awesome. So that's what's happening. That's led by Stacy, Michelle, some of you guys help her out with that. I, th I appreciate that. Um, we're launching something on the 19th, on the day we're on our, that's our launch day that we're shooting for. Um, we've been trying to serve coffee downstairs, and Robert and many people have participated in that and done a great job. We're trying to use a piece of space, and, and some of y'all, I've even talked to people who've never even been upstairs, okay? So here's another incentive. There's actually a space upstairs, for those who've never been, huge space that's really been wasted. And so we're going to fill up that space and do a coffee house. We actually have an LFA coffee house and there's a lot of, I'm telling you guys, Sherry Simonson got really excited and fired up and is pouring a lot of her own, I know she would kill me if I told you that, but she didn't want recognition for that, but really is pouring a lot of her own resources into it and making it happen. We have others that participated in buying us the coffee and a really nice, good coffee, by the way. And, um, and so uh, that's going to be upstairs and giving people an opportunity to have a place to hang out and grab some coffee. Well, that's always good. Come on, somebody give a hallelujah to coffee. Come on, some, yeah, you those of you following, if you're not a coffee drinker, just go up there and act like it. For years, I would do the same thing because all youth pastors, you know, I'm never going to wear skinny jeans, so that ain't happening. But um, all the youth pastors were like, go to Starbucks whenever, you know, Starbucks was cool and stuff. So I'm like, well, I don't drink coffee. Just, I didn't start drinking coffee until I became a pastor. What does that tell you? Um, but uh, as youth pastor, I mean, everybody's going to the Starbucks. You know what I did? I went in there and got a steamer. Y'all know what a steamer is? It's just milk. It just goes, that's all it is okay? Stick some flavor in there and it made me look really cool, okay? So if you're not a coffee drinker, 
Go in there and drink something. There's going to be tea. Um, and those of you who drink tea, you want to be British, whatever. Just, it's going to be awesome, okay? <laughs> connect groups. We have our connect groups. We have one today. I love my connect group. It's a small group, whatever, life group, whatever you guys want to call it. Uh, we call it connect groups here. But, man, I love my connect group. We have a blast at ours. And I like to show up and not be pastor and just rub life with other people who are doing life just like me, who are raising kids just like me, who are in this world just like me. And so we have a lot of fun doing that, but that's available out there. Another ministry that really need help with is a follow-up team. We really want people to help and come alongside us as pastors and, um, and just contact people, love on them, to love the sick. There's so many people that it's hard to keep up with everybody and some fall through the cracks. We've been guilty of that. And, and it's we need help, and so it's nice to be able to contact also our guests besides what the pastors do and just follow up with people and love on them. Come on, church, you still with me today? It's awesome to do that. Some of you are great on the phone, okay? And I'm talking about a landline. I mean, you're great on the phone. I see this all the time. And so I want to use that and capitalize on that incredible talent you have of Instagramming and Facebook, and Facebook everything. And so why not use that for the kingdom? Again, guys, I mean, people are great at that. Why not use it for the, anyway, that's a whole other message in itself. Um, Generation Student Ministries, where's my students at? Y'all wake up, yeah, there's my students. And this isn't all of them, we have a bunch of them that come out on Wednesday nights. But, um, and the future is looking very, very, very bright, by the way. And I'll reveal more of that in the weeks to come and days to come. But kids, I'm telling you, some exciting days ahead for youth ministry. Can you say amen? Um, Young adults as well, Mark, I know I heard you, but I know you're in this church somewhere, Mark. There you are. Um, Mark is um, connecting with our young adults. I know Mason comes and some other ones. We're trying to grow that. So if you're beyond college and already out, and we'd love for you to be a part of that. And speaking of coffee, these guys meet at, meet at Silver Grizzly, do different things and hang out. And um, we'd like to continue to grow that. That needs growth as well. Um, Joyful Generations. This is our senior adult ministries. Where are my senior adult ministers? We have people at. Yay. Um, this is a fun group, by the way. Um, Patsy Martin is our leader. Thank you, Patsy. Would you stand and just kind of wave? You don't have to even say anything. Just There you go. Yay, there's Patsy. She, um, yeah, give her a hand, guys. That's awesome. Um, Patsy leads, um, and that alone, I know you have a team of people that serve alongside with you, but thank you for, for leading that and taking that on this year. And it's, we're already in May. Isn't that crazy? And um, you're leading that. Thank you for you guys for what you do and reaching our, our, our joyful generations, and thank you for that. And uh, you guys meet once a month, and exciting days are ahead for that. Um, we just confirmed a couple of years ago we had Big John Hall come. He's coming back in June, and so that's coming up for a concert for you guys. You know who he is. Um, our youth have no clue, but you guys do. Um, where's the contest at? There they are back there. Our marriage ministry, because there's so much more than just a class, but our marriage ministry do, do some incredible stuff. And this couple right there... Um, Thank you guys for what you do and caring about marriages and caring about couples and caring about this journey we call marriage. And it's not easy. And don't look to your spouse and say, mm-hmm, um, because you'll get in trouble. But marriage is not easy, is it? Okay? It takes work. I get it. Don't look at each other because I already caused the fight already now. Now you got to come to the altar and get saved again. But um, this is why we need marriage ministry. This is why we need a couple that's pouring into couples because marriage takes work. Can you say Amen. Um, nobody can be as good as me and other people, and so there takes work. And you married anyway. I just that'll get back to Stephanie. Um, I, I really am thankful I haven't been smothered to death yet. But uh, but that's why because we have we we learn about the value of human beings, and that's why <laughs> Stephanie hasn't snuffed me out yet, right? And so, um, but that that's a ministry, and they've taken on a thing where they have couples at their house now. They have outside events. This is why it's just so much more than a class. It's, it's life. It's doing life. And I've, I've, I've been told even this morning, we'll plug it some more. Next year in 2020, there's actually a couple's cruise that's on the horizon that's led by Family Life. Um, that's a credible ministry behind that. So thank you, the contest, and for what you guys do for that. Um, Ashley, I'm not sure if she's in here. She's probably out, um, she's out there. Okay. Ashley Shelton, the Sheltons are so plugged in in this place, but Ashley leads our women's ministries. Where's my, where else my ladies at? Ladies, woo. Okay. Um, thank you, all to you. Uh, women's ministry, very powerful. They meet once a month as well, but it's not just a monthly meeting that they have. They do all kinds of stuff, and they minister. Um, they have, they, they, um, I know they get, there's, you got to go out in their booth and find out, but they, they got plugged into so many things. Our men's ministries are going back to Josh. 
This is why we need to keep growing these guys because some of these guys serve in two or three different areas. And so, but Josh and Chris Bodine, I think Chris might be out there as well. So they lead our men. Our men meet every month now, and that's been growing and going and doing awesome things. And I missed this last month. You decided to have steak last month, right? Pork chop. It's meat, okay? It's meat. They had meat, and um, I, I missed that one, and they had, and I, I saw pictures, and they rubbed it in, but um, it's great, so you guys can be a part of that, okay? Um, so that's happening as well. I, listen, folks, I, I could spend all day talking about this, but let me just tell you, we have some exciting things, and still some more things are coming. Um, one thing that we can't make, this is probably number one ministry that should have been mentioned, but I've saved it for last for a reason because I feel it's one of the best. But if we're going to do anything worth anything in this world, we've got to pray. You still with me? Um, come on, guys. You've got to get behind us because we want to exist as a church. We can't get anywhere unless we pray. Amen. Thank you. Um, we are in the process of really developing even more a, a prayer ministry. And uh, that is so important. And again, I hate to even call it that because it's not really a program. It's a part of life. And if we are not praying then we've missed really the whole reason why we're here. And so um, don't have a booth for that today because we are redefining all that and getting leadership behind it. But we'd love for you to get plugged in to prayer ministry because it's really incredible and change your life. And we pray already once a month and, and our men pray every Tuesday morning. So if you're a man out there and you're up really early in the morning and are able to, I know some people get out really early. But if you're around and you want to join our men, I'd love for you to come Tuesday morning, help us, and join our prayer time. But um, that, I, again, I can speak all day on that, but I would love for you to, to get involved in what's out there. So let me give you an incentive before you go. Besides the food, which I've been smelling all morning long, um, when you walk, as you walk out this way, and please, the, the whole heart part today is for everybody to stay, okay, and, and eat lunch. Eat your lunch here. Can everybody say here? here. Yes, yeah, Cinco de Mayo here, Okay. Don't go somewhere else and eat the Lord's cheaps because we got plenty back there, okay? Um, but back in the back, when you go out our church, please go out th that direction over there. There will be cards on a table that look just like this, okay? And why this looks like this, each, each one of these little puzzle pieces represents a ministry opportunity out there in the, in the foyer, okay? We actually have some giveaways today, okay? I know, it's exciting. We have some gift cards um, we have a free trip to Walt Disney World. I'm totally joking. I figured you guys, whoa, yeah, whoo, I want to go sign up. I figured I, I totally lied in church. No, we don't, okay? But wouldn't that be cool someday? I know. Um, no, we can't give away Walt Disney World. But um, we do have some really sweet gifts. We do have some gift cards. We've got some Cinco de Mayo t-shirts that will make you laugh. And um, I even got some guacamole little headset thingies. I don't know, but they look funny. And um, anyway, we've got a bunch of giveaways that, um, but the only way you can win a giveaway is if you visit every booth that's out there, get to know the leadership, ask some questions, and get them to sign your card. Can you say amen? amen. I know. It's just, it's like I get to be a kid all over again. Yes, you do. Okay. But please go visit our ministries out there. Guys, get to know our leaders. They work so hard, not just today. Every day, because save people do what? Serve people. If you're a saved person here today, that's a prerequisite, um, then you have no other choice but to serve people. And I'd love for you to get plugged in to an incredible church we call Longview First Assembly. Can you say amen? Are we a perfect church? Not by any means. Perfect pastor? Maybe. But perfect church? No. You guys are, I'm only throwing it out to see if you're waking up. Um, would you stand with me today and pray over you? Church, I really mean this sincerely. I love you. And um, many of our ministry leaders are starting to sneak out so they can go back to their tables. Let me give you a little bit of instruction today as well besides our ministry fair. We have lots of food in the kids' room that we'd love for you to, to be a part of, okay, which means you got to eat it, okay? Um, a lot of dishes are represented. Um, I will give a little hint. Jason made like 15 pounds of carnitas. You're saying, what's carnitas? Don't ask questions. Just stick in a tortilla and eat it, okay? Um, and when it comes to tacos, why do you need to know? That's all I'm saying. And so, but Jason did make a lot of that. That's out there. But many people made dishes to share. 
Um, go out there in the kids' room, grab you a plate. You can either sit there and eat it and have fellowship as a church, hello, or take your plate and go visit the many ministries that are here. But listen, folks, it's 1122, plenty of time to hang out here, have lunch, fellowship, and get a part of that ministry fair out there and visit every booth that's out there. Grab one of these cards on the way out, go grab some food, and go talk to our leaders and go pour into our ministries. Can you say amen? Let's pray, and I'll let you guys go. Father in heaven, thank you so much for today, God. We love you. Thank you for loving us first. Thank you for the opportunity to serve, Lord, because save people serve people. Lord, I pray for every person that's in this place today, Lord, that you, Lord, will help them find a place to belong, a place to connect, and a place to serve. I thank you for our leaders. I thank you for the food we're about to partake of. It's already blessed, Lord, so I don't need to ask that. But, Lord, let it go towards our nourishment of our bodies. We ask all this in your name and everybody said. Amen, church. I love you. We'll see you guys next week on Mother's Day. 